Let's talk to Norman Williams. He's making his international debut here. He is the president and CEO of Rambler Metals and Mining. They are AIM listed. Also, they've got a dual listing on TSX. Norman, welcome. Thank you, sir. Right, a couple of headlines. Uh, market cap circa 34 million, share price currently five pence, uh, 52 week highs, 10.75p. Let's kick off, right? Let's ask the juicy questions. Um, Give me the sort of recap, okay, on what you guys are all about. Yeah, we're a duly listed company, as you mentioned, listed on the AIM and in Toronto and the Venture Exchange as well. We're a copper gold producer, uh, located in the far eastern side of, of Canada, the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, activate, reactivated a former producing mine that produced between 1972 and 1982. Opened the mine back in uh, 2010, commercial production 2011. Since then, you know, that was a small scale, 650 tonne per day operation. Uh, with the financing we did post the PFS update in 2015, we're now set out to do a uh, nail down our expansion. We got the infrastructure in place uh, and now we want to bring our production up to 1,250 tonnes per day. So we're expanding basically organic growth within uh, within the company. Okay, so Lombard OD have now got something like 12% stake. That I yeah, just in, the yeah, in around 10-12%. Uh, biggest shareholder would be CE2 Mining and those are, the, those are the guys that came in on the financing we did back in uh, 2016. And uh, Lombard over there just came in, yeah, absolutely, with a, with a private place with a new US deal for $3 million. Yep. Uh, second tranche closed a couple weeks ago. Okay, so last time you were on the show, you were talking about the Ming mine. How's that coming along? Yeah, so the Ming mine, you know, that is the, the flagship asset right now. We do have other assets, but the focus is on the Ming mine. We, uh, we've, I alluded to an expansion. The expansion is uh, well underway now. We have all the infrastructure expansion in place. And the last piece being the reversal of our ventilation system, allowing, you know, adequate amounts of fresh air to get pumped into the underground so we can run all the equipment we need to run to get our production to where we need it to be. So the expansion infrastructure is all in place uh, and right now we're gearing ourselves up to sustain our, our, our ability to, to go to, to pro uh, productivity, uh, profitability and ultimately sustain that 1250 ton per day uh, target which we need to, to get our cash flow where it needs to go. So taking over an old mine, is that easier than basically starting afresh, if that makes uh, sense? I want to say, I want to say, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of infrastructure that was in place. I be the way the old guys did it back in the day was a lot different than how we're doing it. I mean, yep. you can't get people to drive jack leg and stoper like they did, you know, you know, 30 years ago. But what we are able to do, we got more mechanized, so we're able to uh, to to mine bulkier uh, than than normal. So to answer your question, yeah, twofold, depending on how you look at it. For us, it was you know we we inherited a lot of underground infrastructure, which was no doubt. Uh, a big help. Had it been a little bit larger, it would have been easier on the start, but overall, yeah, I would say in our case, yes. Okay. Yeah. So you raised some money. How are you going to spend it? The money we raised as of late, which, you know, CE2 had a, had a warrant exercise that they, uh, they, they completed, uh, as well as you mentioned, Lambert O'Dair came in with, a, with, a, with additional support. They've been a supporter for the company for a long, long time. We're going to use it basically, our expansion fell a little bit behind, our ventilation system that I referred to fell a little bit behind. Uh, you know, development, you know, the last two years in this expansion phase, you certainly learned that, you know, the expansion itself, uh, you know, probably could have went a little bit better than we wanted to, you know, coming off 650 tons a day and going to 1,250 tons a day is a big step. And overall, you know, we need to, we need to get that 1,250 in. So what, what I'm getting at is the cash will be used to strengthen our balance sheet as we go, go forward with, you know, our focus now is on productivity, uh, improvements in the underground, focused on mine planning, mine ops, and, um, and mine maintenance. And we'll use that cash to strengthen our balance sheet and grow our way forward to that sustained 1,250 ton per day uh, target. Right. Yeah. So if I'm an existing shareholder, yeah. what excitement's coming for the rest of the year? The first thing you're looking for, uh, and you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves because we're excited about what the future expansion is going to look like beyond this 1,250 sustain that we're doing right now. So first things first, look for the company to start start to deliver on its what it set out to deliver, and that's 1,250 tons per day. Uh, keep in mind, we're mining in, in the lowest grade section of our ore body now, and as we go deeper, our grades get better. You know, so you're looking for you know, us to get to a head grade around 1.3, 1.4 for the balance of the year, uh, get into uh, 1,250 tons per day, and from there, when we start, per, uh, profitability comes around the corner, cash flow starts to flow. When we got that stabilized and we're happy with our productivity improvements, we're going to look forward to you know the 2,000 ton per day valuation and the further upside beyond what we're doing with this initial expansion to 1,250. Okay, so my million dollar question, I always ask this at the end of CEO interviews, um, as a former hedge fund guy, okay, give me three reasons why I should consider having your shares in my portfolio. 
Uh, the biggest one, well, three big ones. Let me start from the top. A lot of uh, organic growth. Uh, we're growing to 1250, want to go to 2000 tons. We have other assets in the portfolio uh, where we're looking to get two mills, sort of another mill brought into the picture, new mill built on the Ming, Ming mine site. Use our existing mill to take another asset. We have seven million ton asset, two percent copper. Copper price in general. I mean, let's look. We're going to come back to that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a big one. Uh, but if you just look internally, the organic growth. We have a we have a very good backer in terms of CE two. They're very supportive. Bring a lot of knowledge to the table and being very helpful in you know in the expansion we, where we come from today. Uh, and and certainly last but certainly not least is just the infrastructure that we have in playing the people we have in the organization are top notch. Uh, we've added some additional players into the mix with, you know, uh, from an engineering and geology perspective, and we've got a strong team. And last but not least, which is probably four, yep. I would say the asset that we have in the, in the massive sulfides in the lower football, so the mine assets themselves are phenomenal. I mean, they're world class, uh, and as we get deeper into the football zone, our C1 cost is going to come down, and we're going to turn some nice profits. So... It's a it's a it's an organic growth story that you should be very interested in. Right. Okay. Gold price. Okay. Um, an Egyptian recently said he's got 1.8 billion pounds. He was going to spend half of it on gold. Copper, obviously, the benchmark for the world economy. We've obviously got trade wars. We've got Trump, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Are you keeping half an eye on the prices of those, or is that almost a derivative of what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis? I think it is, Taylor. It's a derivative, but no doubt, I'd be lying if I said I didn't look at it every day. Uh, we're in 85% of our revenue is copper based in some gold. So we do, I don't focus too much of my attention on the gold side, but the copper side, we're very excited uh, about where copper was going. You know, deficits being projected for 2019. You know, we're expanding an operation and upper moving copper market. I mean, we need copper. I mean, there's lots of lights in the studio, for yep. example. We need copper. We don't even know what the EV, truly we don't know what the EV and the, up, you know, the, uh, the upstream of what the EV, you know, benefits will be in terms of, you know, all the electricity and the power generation that goes along with that EV technology. Uh, that hasn't been factored in yet. So we're copper bulls, no doubt, not just because we're a copper producer, but the world needs copper, and, and we, ha we happen to produce one. Gold, I'm, you know, I'm anything... I think that's the most difficult contract <sighs> in the market, right? They say gold is old. Yeah. I know a lot more about copper than I do about gold. Right. We happen to have a 15% of our revenue is gold, and... You know, gold is not going down no, no time soon, I don't think. I think we're longer-term builds. We're in around $1,400 an ounce, so we're still fairly bullish on the copper market as well. Norman, on that note, good awesome. luck to you and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank goodness, you. thank you.